Today we're going to review tangential flows and incompressible flow over 2D airfoils, two topics that were covered in the Aerospace Engineering Fundamentals course. So this is some critical background to the treatment of aerodynamic flows uh, from an analytical perspective. And what we're going to focus on today is 2D incompressible steady irrotational flow. So we're going to begin um, by reviewing a few key concepts. Uh, and these include the concepts of circulation, stream function, velocity potential, Laplace's equation, and boundary conditions in aerodynamic flows. So we'll then review potential flows before moving on to flow over airfoils. So the first of these concepts that I want to review is circulation. Um, and this is in 2.13 of Anderson. So this is fundamental to the calculation of lift, this concept of circulation. And in general, you can imagine some arbitrary flow where we have streamlines. And if we take some contour, any contour C around this, uh, in, in this flow field, uh, then the edge of that contour can be defined by uh, many of these small vectors, the S, the velocity on the surface is V, and the vorticity inside is zeta. So we define the circulation gamma to be the negative of the closed loop integral over the surface C of V dot dS. So this negative sign here is an aerodynamic convention. Um, and the reason that this is done is so that clockwise circulation get up. Uh, sorry, uh, so this gives a clockwise circulation being greater than zero. Um, which is usually the direction of circulation we have in aerodynamic flows. Uh, and so this is just a convenient uh, addition to the definition to put the minus sign in here. Further, the circulation is related to the vorticity via Stokes or Gauss's theorem. Um, so Sorry, this is actually capital S, the surface. So if we integrate over the surface S of drag cross V dot ds, then this also gives the circulation, as these are equivalent using Stokes' theorem. So that circulation, we'll use it later on. For now, I just want to re-familiarize you with the definition. So now let's come to stream functions and velocity potential. And this is uh, 2.14. And 2.15 of Anderson. So if we have 2D steady flow, then the equation for a streamline
is simply dy dx. Its slope is equal to v over u, the vertical velocity component, or y velocity component over u, the x velocity component. And that's because of the definition of a streamline, as we discussed last time, which is a curve which is everywhere tangent to the velocity vector. So if we integrate, we get some function of x and y equals a constant. And this is the equation of a streamline. So if we call this function psi bar, then we get psi bar of x and y equals a constant. So this is what we call the stream function. And different values of this constant correspond to different streamlines. Now, the mass flow per unit depth is going to be given by the change in the stream function between two streamlines. So that's, say, C2 minus C1. And a really important property of this stream function is how its partial derivatives are related to the velocity field, which is that rho times u is d psi bar dy, and rho v is minus d psi bar dx. Basically, means that if we have the stream function, which is a scalar field, we can get the vector velocity field directly. This is true. Remember, we said 2D steady flow. This is true for both compressible and incompressible flow. Now, in Incompressible flow, we usually define psi to be psi bar over rho. And then the velocity components are given directly by the partial derivatives. And then delta psi is the volume flow rate rather than the mass flow rate since we've dropped the density dependence between two streamlines, C1 and C2. And again, that's per unit depth. Now, the next idea is the velocity potential, which is closely related to the concept of stream function. So, if we have irrotational flow, and as we talked about uh, in the first lecture, irrotational flow means there's zero vorticity everywhere. So the vorticity drag cross V is zero. Then, if we also apply a, a vector identity for any scalar field psi, which is that grad cross grad psi equals zero, then if we take v to be grad psi, we get 
that V equals this grad psi, and so that psi is what we define as a velocity potential. And this is, in general, a function of space x, y, and z. Then the x velocity u is just phi dx, v, phi dy, and w, the z velocity, d phi dz. So to summarize the uh, key restrictions and regions of applicability, uh, the stream function is used in 2D, whereas the potential can be used in 2D or 3D. The stream function applies in rotational flows, but the velocity potential does not. So what this tells us is that here we only need to determine this velocity potential, potential to get the velocity field, similar to how here we could get the velocity field knowing the stream function. So if we have irrotational steady flow, so that we're here, by definition we call that potential flow. If the flow is also inviscid, as we stated earlier. One final observation is that the lines of constant potential function and constant stream function are perpendicular, which can be useful when trying to plot characteristics of a full field.